Hello everyone and welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. On today's video, we're looking at this girl right here. And yes, we've got some soul separation. And hiding underneath that is a soul ulcer. So in this video, we're going to follow along on her healing process, starting with today in this initial trim and her next three subsequent trims to see how this all turns out. So stick around and you'll see what happens. So while it's pretty obvious where the problem is on this foot, the first thing I'm going to do is give this foot a quick trim. You may notice some markings on the other claw, the opposite claw to the injured one here, and I get questions a lot. How do you know there's not a problem lurking underneath that dark spot? Shouldn't you investigate that? And the reason or the way I know there's nothing under that is in its location. It's in the middle of the sole, and there's really no problem that would show itself there uh, unless it was a puncture situation. Nothing really ever ever happens in those spots. So I'm not going to dig that area out because it's just going to create a hole in that sole. Now, in this case, when I put a block on, I'm going to want that clean um, just so I have good adhesion from my block. But there's never going to be something underneath that, like I said, unless it's a puncture situation. So I've ruled that out here so I can leave it be. So it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing here because my left hand is blocking the view, but I'm using that chunk of hoof to try to pull it away, the, the loose stuff away from that lesion. That's why I'm doing that. I'm cutting from below and from above, and I'm, I'm trying to pull that away so I'm not um, putting my knife right up against that lesion itself. Another thing to note here is that this horn is already detached. I'm not pulling it away from the corium. Here you can actually see where that uh, ulcer formed in that sole. You can see how it, it didn't produce horn in that area because of that ulcer formation or that hemorrhaging that was forming in that sole. So that's what ultimately causes this problem. As that, as that sole is forming, when it's got that hemorrhage spot in there, that's poor quality horn and it basically breaks down and ultimately will create a hole right in that sole. Here you can see it better. I'm using my left hand to pull that sole away from that lesion so I can remove it safely. This foot is a really good example of why I don't spray the foot down before I start working on them. There is so much debris packed underneath these soles that's hidden that I would never be able to clean at the beginning that it doesn't do much good to do it then. I wait until I can get this area opened up and that way I can really do a, a, a much better job at cleaning these lesions out.
If you're a regular to the channel, you know these next steps by heart by now. We'll put a rubber block on the medial claw. That inside claw is gonna take the weight off of that injured claw. And then I'm gonna use some salicylic acid powder to kill any of the bacteria that might be remaining there. With the size of this lesion, I know this is gonna take uh, several treatments and that the salicylic acid is really gonna be a key part in not only killing the bacteria, but helping to slough off some of this injured tissue. So as we let her go, you can see she's getting along pretty well on that block, even though that lesion was quite large. So now we're gonna fast forward ahead three weeks and take a look and see how she's coming along. I gotta be honest, when I first pulled this foot up, I was disappointed with the way it looked. I had completely forgotten about how large this lesion was. And when I saw it with it still this much of it open, I thought, man, she really is not healing very well. But having reviewed that footage, I can see she's made a drastic improvement. You can see the rings around it and how far it's contracted that lesion. There's still a long ways to go, so we've got some work to do here. She's lost her block, so we're going to need to replace that. But she's doing better. We just got to keep at this. Another thorough rinse down and another wrap with salicylic acid, and we'll check back with her in three more weeks. So here we are three weeks later and that lesion has continued to shrink down. We're not there yet, but we're getting close. Now you're not gonna get to see any footage of me working on this foot because my GoPro corrupted a whole bunch of files and I lost hours of footage, including this trim. Luckily I filmed some with my phone, so you got to see this where it is right now, but you're not gonna get to see me working or wrapping or doing anything here because of that. But we're gonna swing ahead now, three more weeks. Now we're nine weeks from that initial trim and finally, we've gotten this lesion to completely fill in. We've got new horn now across this entire sole. So if you've ever asked yourself, how long does it take for an ulcer or one of, the, one of these things to heal? It all depends. Some of them will heal in a month. Some will heal in two months and yet some longer. So it all depends on how much damage and how much corium damage is involved when that happens. You can see this footage is a little blurry too. It's focusing on her left rear leg. I'm not sure why it does that, but I didn't notice it at the time. So it's a little blurry here, but all I've got to do is really just trim up these toes. This foot is really ready to go. If I thought she was sensitive on it at all, I'd put a block on it one more time, but she's walking really well, and I'm happy to say she's got that healed up. So we just have to follow along now and make sure this doesn't become a chronic Good issue. Puppy. And I know you like that puppy. puppy. So at the end of the day, you get to watch him playing around with some cows. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you all on the next one.